We have to talk, we have to talk about this year right now, the blue screen of Dev Day and 19th of July 2024, so let's get started. So this is what many people saw today when they went to their office and started up their computers, a blue screen of Dev. What does a blue screen of Dev mean? Basically, Microsoft Windows refusing to work. This wouldn't be a huge issue if it only affected one company, a few office PCs, but it happened on multiple companies worldwide. So airports were affected, they could not transport people or even cargo because they, there was no access to the passenger list or cargo list because they were running Microsoft Windows. Hospitals that are not able to perform operations on patients because they are not able to access the files with all the data that is necessary for this operation. They could not take in new people because they have to write down some yeah, data into the database. They couldn't. So the only thing they could do is like take emergency patients, but that's it. Nothing more, nothing less. Other major software issues that striked multiple different uh, TV stations that are relying on Microsoft Windows. I think I see a pattern somehow. And yes, I think you see it as well. It's Microsoft Windows. So why? Because yes, there was an issue with Windows. Has it been hacked? like the I love you virus or other viruses or crypto that had we had encountered in the past. Nope. What happened was a simple Microsoft Windows update. But wait a sec, shouldn't updates make things better? Yes, in theory, they should make things better. And this is why Microsoft yeah, thought it is a good idea to enable automatic update per default on all Windows machines. Hmm, I think they should have thought about this twice. If you enable automatic updates on all your machines, you have to make sure that those updates are indeed working fine and updating on the majority of systems without any issues, actually on all systems without any issues. And this apparently did not work. And pssst, let me tell you one thing. I knew about this happening 10 years ago even. We, people who are working in the IT, know that this is a big risk. Automatic updates combined with the monopoly that Microsoft has and the poor security management that Microsoft does. Because what happened here is not Microsoft screwing it up alone, but relying on a third-party software creator, not, not, let's not say developer, that creates a piece of software and allows them to take care of the security of their own operating system. So Microsoft is not always updating your computer's software it outsources this to another company and there are only a handful of companies that do this for security features. Really? As unbelievable as it sounds, that is really the case. So we have various different problems that occur here. First of all, Microsoft being a monopoly in terms of Windows and their operating systems. This is an issue not only of Microsoft, but an issue of every customer of Microsoft. Because especially like the airports, hospitals, relying on this worldwide used operating system can be either very good or very bad. In the case of very good, it provides you with lots of updates and support and you don't have to have too many IT guys and nerds that are working for your IT department. On the other hand, as you see now, the highly reliancy on Microsoft and their operating system, where Microsoft apparently is relying with the security on only two or three other companies, 
and maybe a little bit R&D that they do on their own is not always a good idea. So especially in those, I would say, highly dangerous, if they just don't work, kind of companies, hospitals, airplanes, maybe even, not only airports, wouldn't it be a better idea to just say, okay, maybe it doesn't make sense to use an operating system that everyone else is using just because of the security point of view, because yeah, if this would be a hack, you would be affected. If it is an update that is not thoroughly tested, you are affected. So why not using an alternative? And there, my friends, we come to how could we avoid, how could this be avoided in the future? How could we avoid such issues in the future? And this is where I want to talk with you in the comment section. What do you think? I have one strong claim. First of all, the claim what Microsoft could do to avoid such issues because it's affecting Microsoft. And the other one is what could those companies with this highly sensitive data like patient data uh, or air port and air passenger data do in the future. So let's talk about Microsoft first. So what Microsoft could do first of all, what they have to do, it's a must and I think there are lots of people doing right now, improving their testing suite. Because usually what you do when you roll out updates, you just don't like code the update, hit compile, the new program is there and you just say, okay, now I push it out to every computer on this planet. No, what you do is you test your update if it's working fine. And this is something that usually is not done by hand. Someone just installs a new update and that's it. There are autom automatic testing stations and Microsoft surely is using uh, this kind of autom automization because otherwise it would take them lots and lots of money and hours, man hours for people to do those tests manually. And I think there's a loophole somehow or somewhere where this slipped through. And this is what Microsoft has to found, find this loophole and fix this so that in the future such issue cannot occur again because yeah, every computer basically that's running Microsoft Windows in a newer version got this update and was unable to boot after the update. The second thing that I think Microsoft should at least think over and I, my claim here is disable automatic updates or at least in a maybe less radical way allow the users optionally to disable the automatic updates. I would prefer it automatic updates by default off and if you want to you can optionally turn it on. Why are they not doing it like they did in the 90s and the early 2000s? Windows XP, everyone remembers still eventually. Windows Vista, uh, people don't want to remember. <laughs> but <laughs> Windows 7, I think, as well. They did not have automatic updates enabled there. So you have to go into your system settings and update. Why did they change it? I think the major reason why they changed it, and this is also a claim now, discuss with me in the comments, I think they really think that their users are too stupid to update. So their fear was because in the past we had like lots of security holes and we had really viruses and crypto malware that was encrypting hard drives because people did not update their systems regularly. And Microsoft saw that and really came to the conclusion people are too stupid to install the updates or are installing the updates too late, way too late. And especially also in bigger companies where the IT is working too slow to update their systems. So they had this genius idea to say, okay, so we force them to update the systems. How do you force a company to update your system or the system or everyone to update the system? not only by enabling this update by default, because yes, of course, a normal home user like my mom and my dad probably will not go into settings and disable the update there, the automatic update. You just buy the computer, it comes with the automatic update, they get the automatic update. But a company 
probably would go into settings and say, eh, let's disable the automatic update. It might break something with our workflow, with our apps. Maybe we've used some older apps or something like this, or self-developed apps, and it might break something. So better disable it. When Microsoft came up to the idea, okay, those companies, they are disabling our automatic update. Make them pay if they want to disable the update. Make it harder for them. So that means if a company wants to disable the automatic update, they have to pay extra for a special Microsoft Windows Enterprise something uh, version that allows them to disable automatic updates. And friends, is this the right way to do so? Force people with automatic updates. I think it's a very bad decision for Microsoft because this, of course, when they introduced this, was already clear to me and to lots of my colleagues that this will run one day into a disaster where computers just reboot into the update, the update doesn't work. And yeah, Microsoft always claimed when they did this, we have very good testing, so this will never happen. It happened multiple times already, but never in such a big way. Why in such a big way? Because earlier the updates were quite local. They did the right thing by just having the updates roll out in waves. So if you have automatic updates, this is what your smartphone manufacturers also do. You don't get the update on the same day as everyone else. Usually they roll out in waves. I think there are some exceptions. Maybe Apple is doing this at, at the same time, but they have ridiculously good uh, engineering and um, update testing, um, especially with the beta version and so on. But nevertheless, also failures, mistakes happen there. The point is what Microsoft did in the past with the waving release of the updates, they apparently don't do with so-called security updates because they have to arrive to the user quite quickly. But they're not so rigorously checking those updates apparently. And those, uh, this update now came from a company called CrowdStrike that is one of those handful companies that does the security for Microsoft Windows, but also other systems. So other um, manufacturers or other software developers are relying on this company. It's another bad thing. So now let's talk about what the companies that are affected by this Microsoft issue can do. And this is quite easy. Just switch away from Microsoft. It sounds easy, but probably isn't, especially if you have workflows that are heavily relying on Microsoft uh, products. But more and more those services are going into the cloud. So that means Microsoft Outlook, Microsoft Office is working in your browser already in a way where I would say it is good enough for most use cases that you did in the past, maybe on the desktop itself. That means go to an alternative, Linux. Linux has many, many distributions. There are many big distributions, Zuse, Red Hat, but there are also smaller ones. My Linux distribution, for example, Neptune, would never have this issue because I don't do automatic updates. I don't force automatic updates to the users. I don't think the users are too stupid to install updates. I leave the power in the hands of the users. And many, many Linux distributions are doing the same. And even if they have automatic updates, they have rollback mechanisms that are quite easy and allow you with simple reboot to go into a working system. And this is something that Microsoft is lacking in this case. This is something that Linux and that Linux distributions built decades long because they have to have very reliable server operating systems. But not only for server operating systems, Linux is very, very valuable. For desktop systems, it can be very valuable and good as well. We have lots of applications there. We have tons of stuff that is user-friendly. It's not like the same thing when Linux started in the 90s where everything was like hacking in a command line. It is graphical, it is easy. And it would be no issue at all to run the airports uh, ticketing machines or the access of the database for the airports to see which passenger goes onto which flight and on which seat in the airplane. Wouldn't be an issue at all to run this on Linux 
maybe the software needs to be rewritten or be compatible, make compatible with Linux. It costs maybe a little bit more money, but the win that you have there is a system that is like not like 99% of all the systems out there. So that a major outbreak uh, of a virus or a new Windows update is causing such a huge issue to your company, to your airport, to your airplanes uh, or hospitals or other companies that might be affected in a big, big way here. But this doesn't mean that I'm encouraging everyone to switch to Linux. I would like to see everyone switching to Linux, but that's not going to happen, I think. It is more encouraging diversity. Diversity with the operating system and the companies you rely on. So don't rely or put all your eggs in one basket called Microsoft and Microsoft Windows products. Maybe put a backup system that is running Linux, that is running macOS, Haiku, FreeBSD or whatever you like to have there as a backup simply. Or maybe, yeah, this one system does not need a Windows license. You can pay someone else to get your system up and running. And this is, I think, a very interesting world we are living right now because I think I see this major, major blackout, uh, let's say blackout there, technological blackout, as a chance for companies to think about plan B, about a backup, about maybe switching from Microsoft and Windows products maybe to something else. Maybe this is the last yeah, kind of push they got now with this uh, major, major blackout. What is your opinion about this whole situation? Write it down in the comment section. I will put my link down below to the uh, Neptune Linux distribution if you're interested in Neptune Linux to try it out. It's based upon Debian, so it's not completely 100% my own work, but it is optimized for desktop computers. And if you are running a desktop computer that is that was affected today by the blue screen of death, maybe think about trying something else or having something else as a backup. If you cannot work with Windows, you can at least put up your Linux system and then you have the possibility to just simply uh, access your files and work uh, like you have to or want to work. That's everything for this yeah, talk kind of video. How do you like this kind of videos where I talk a lot um, and yeah, about very interesting technological aspects that appeared that occurred not only smartphones but also in general uh, technological things write it on the comment section as well until the next time happy blue screen of death day bye